President Evil's Leon S. Kennedy has been through a lot, from fighting to survive a city overtaken by a zombie scourge, to protecting the president's daughter to saving Secret Service agent Elena Harper, this guy has seen it all. And we're here to tell his whole story, cover to cover. Leon finished his time at the police academy in 1998. He had grown fascinated with the increasing crime in Raccoon City, and the city had put out a call for an increased police force due to crime levels rising and a series of bizarre killings, so Leon applied and was accepted. He visited the station and received a basic introduction, then drove home in anticipation for his first day. The night before Leon was scheduled to begin working for the RPD, he broke up with his girlfriend. He got drunk at a party afterwards and overslept, which is why he was late for his first day on the job. Being late, however, is probably what saved his life. The events of Resident Evil 2 takes place on what was supposed to be Leon's first day on the job. As the city descended into chaos, a media blackout was put in place, so he had no idea what he was getting into as he drove towards Raccoon City. In the 2019 RE2 remake, Capcom cut a lot of this backstory, but this is how Leon started, late to his first day because of a drunken breakup. When rookie cop Leon arrives in Raccoon City, he discovers that the city is under a complete military lockdown due to the release of a biological weapon. He meets Claire Redfield, who is searching for her brother Chris, another central protagonist in the Resident Evil series. Leon and Claire split up to look for survivors and agree to meet later at the police station. As Leon journeys to, through, and underneath the Raccoon City police station, he begins to discover a massive conspiracy that leads to the pharmaceutical corporation Umbrella. He also encounters Ada Wong, who becomes a major player in the Resident Evil franchise. While Wong appears to die during the events of the game, she actually survives, though Leon is none the wiser. Leon's discovery that Umbrella is behind the distraction of Raccoon City is what sends him down the path we see in later games. After he and Claire escape from the ruins of the city, he vows to hunt down those responsible and stop Umbrella from whatever they are planning with their biological weapons. So, is it over? I don't know. But if it's not, we'll stop it. Whatever it takes. Yeah, you damn right we will. After the events in Raccoon City, Leon joins a secret task force called the Anti-Umbrella Pursuit and Investigation Team. He excels at his training and remains focused on battling Umbrella and stopping the bioweapons they manufactured. The team was actually created in response to what happened in Raccoon City. As one of the few survivors of that massive outbreak, Leon was an obvious choice to join the organization. Leon's team answers directly to the President of the United States. They have top-level security clearance, and they are at the front lines of many bioterrorist attacks. They are also top secret themselves. If any of the team were captured, they were disowned by the organization, as if they never existed. During his training as a special agent, Leon begins to piece together the size of the enemy they are facing in Umbrella. He also learns about Albert Wesker and the fact that Ada Wong may have actually survived the Raccoon City incident. One of the first missions Leon takes on as a member of the Anti-Umbrella Pursuit and Investigation Team is codenamed Operation Javier, which first appeared in the game Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles, a prequel to Resident Evil 4. Leon and another agent, Jack Krauser, are sent to South America to investigate a drug kingpin named Javier Hidalgo. Hidalgo had been in contact with a former Umbrella scientist and is suspected of purchasing biological agents from him. Leon and Jack are sent to discover the truth and save the day. Leon soon encounters Javier Hidalgo's daughter, Manuela, and realizes she might be the key to curing some of the biological agents that have been plaguing the area. However, he is attacked by Javier, who has infected himself with the T. Veronica virus and merged with the local plant life to become a huge monster. Due to the warm, humid climate and the unique biochemistry of the Veronica complex that Javier becomes, this foe threatens to infect the entire Amazon rainforest unless Leon can stop it. Spoiler alert, he kicks its ass. Leon, Manuela, and Jack eventually destroy the creature, unaware that Albert Wesker has been observing the battle all along. Why? Because he's a shadowy, backstabbing supervillain. Soon after his encounter with Hidalgo, Leon finds himself on a new mission to rescue the president's daughter, who is being held captive in an isolated Spanish village. Anyway, you know what this is all about. My assignment is to search for the president's missing daughter. He soon encounters the Plagas Parasite, which is being used by a cult called Los Illuminados to control the infected. The cult plans to infect the president's daughter, Ashley, before returning her to the White House, where they can use her as a spy and infect other powerful people. Keeping her alive proves to honestly be a huge pain in the butt sometimes. Leon eventually learns that his former partner from Operation Javier, Jack Krauser, actually works for Albert Wesker and is the one who kidnapped Ashley. He also encounters Ada Wong, whom he believes had died during the events of Resident Evil 2. Leon kills Krauser and the leader of Los Illuminados, Sadler, with Ada's help. However, she then steals a sample of Los Plagas before escaping. Of course, Ada is also working with Wesker. In a moment that would make Michael Bay proud, Leon and Ashley ride a jet ski away from the island as it explodes, and Leon is heralded as a hero. 
Once Leon returns from Europe and his battle with Los Illuminados, he is sent to Harvardville, a small city in the United States, to deal with a bioterrorist attack on the airport there. These events occur as the plot of the animated film Resident Evil Degeneration. Don't feel bad if you've never heard of it. At the airport, Leon encounters RE2 co-protagonist Claire Redfield, who now works with the human rights organization TerraSafe. As events unfold, it is eventually revealed that the owner of another evil pharmaceutical company, is there any other kind, called Will Pharma, is causing the attacks, so that they can make a huge profit selling vaccines for the T-Virus and G-Virus. Leon thwarts Frederick Downing, the head of Will Farmer and a former Umbrella researcher, and eventually he is arrested for his crimes. Downing had been using his position to gain contacts who may be interested in buying the T-Virus to use as a bioweapon. Leon returns in a direct sequel to Degeneration, Resident Evil Damnation. This animated film sees Leon journey back to Europe. He must venture to the generically named Eastern Slav Republic to investigate claims that bioweapons are being used in the country's civil war. Damnation also serves as a prequel to Resident Evil 6. It even shows gameplay clips of RE6 during its end credits. Leon discovers that there are a massive amount of bioweapons being used in the Eastern Slav Republic, and he suspects Ada Wong is responsible. Due to her betrayal in Resident Evil 4 and the fact that, yeah, she's a total mercenary spy. Leon soon discovers that the president of the Eastern Slav Republic, Svetlana Belakova, is using tyrants and Los Plagas to maintain her control over the war-torn country. He eventually finds himself facing off against a number of super-powerful tyrant bioweapons, and just when he thinks he's toast, a joint force of troops from the United States and Russia intervene in the civil war. Leon is rescued and Svetlana is forced to step down. Leon is one of several protagonists of Resident Evil 6, and he faces a pretty stiff mental test. Leon is forced to shoot the President of the United States, who has been infected with the C-Virus. This is especially heartbreaking for Leon, as the President, Adam Benford, is also the man who had originally recruited Leon to join the Anti-Umbrella Task Force in the first place. Leon and another agent, Helena Harper, make their way to Torlok's Cathedral, where they encounter a terrifying experiment in the catacombs. They discover that the attack was orchestrated by Derek Simmons, who had been President Benford's national security advisor. He was also a member of a secret society called The Family, because this is Resident Evil, so of course he is. After Leon and Helena escape from the church, Simmons orders the destruction of Tall Oaks and frames Leon as the mastermind who started the attack and assassinated the president. Simmons flees to China, while Leon and Helena must regroup and come up with a plan. After all, they are now wanted criminals. With Leon and Helena now wanted for the president's assassination, the two fake their deaths so they can follow Simmons to China, end his threat to the world, and clear their names. When they arrive, they discover that Simmons has started another bioweapon outbreak. Leon also encounters Sherry Birkin, the girl he and Claire rescued during the events of Resident Evil 2. She is now an adult and a federal agent herself. Anybody else feel like career opportunities in the Resident Evil universe are limited to evil pharmaceutical executive or badass federal agent? Anyway, Leon works together with his companions to track down Simmons, who infects himself with the C-Virus to battle the team. Leon, Helena, and the rest battle Simmons through many mutations, and Leon eventually finishes him off with a well-placed shot from a rocket launcher. Ada Wong once again reappears and crosses Leon's path, but she is nowhere to be found when Leon boards a helicopter after the battle with Simmons. He flies out of China as his portion of Resident Evil 6 comes to a close. Leon takes a while to recover from the events of Tall Oaks in China, but in the animated film Resident Evil Vendetta, he eventually returns to duty. However, his next mission in Washington, D.C. is a traumatizing event that almost pushes Leon over the brink, just about breaking him in the process. Is this what my life's supposed to be? Fighting the living dead and the bastards that make them? What's the point of it all? Prior to the events of the film, Leon's team was on a hunt for a group of bioweapons, when the mission went horribly wrong. His entire team was infected and killed, and Leon himself had to travel to the morgue and execute each of his former squad mates as they turn into mindless killing machines. He is barely able to cope and takes a leave of absence to figure out his situation. I keep fighting, and fighting, and fighting, and instead of seeing an end to this shit, it just keeps getting worse. Instead, he spends his time drinking and trying to forget his pain. This is where Chris Redfield finds him. Chris recruits Leon to investigate a new series of bioweapon attacks. Leon reluctantly agrees, but he's starting to get jaded. Leon continues to question the point of fighting what he feels like is a futile war against bioterrorists. Well, you ready to rock? Are you kidding? Let's do this. 
Leon and Chris head to New York, where a bad dude named Glenn Arius is planning a huge bioattack weapon that will trigger an airborne virus. Arius has been accumulating bioweapon technology from the various corporations that Leon had been taking down, eventually amassing a noteworthy collection that he hoped to use to seize global power. Leon and Chris battle through Arius' creations, eventually coming face to face with the mastermind himself. Arius, of course, infects himself and manages to get the upper hand in a one-on-one -on -one fight with Chris. Leon comes to the rescue, and Chris finishes Arius off with a grenade launcher. So, you know, a typical Tuesday in Resident Evil world. After the battle, Leon continues to question his commitment to battling bioterrorism. As he sees it as a battle he can never truly win, Chris encourages him to focus on the present and just to continue fighting whatever is directly in front of him. How much longer can we keep going on like this? I don't know. I never make plans that far ahead. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite games are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.